February 28, National Science Day. Do you know why we celebrate it? It's because of one guy, a genius who made history, not just for India, but for all of Asia. He was the first Asian to win Nobel Prize for science, and that too during the British rule. It was at that time the world barely recognized India's scientific potential. His discovery changed physics forever. But what exactly did he discover? And why do we celebrate it as National Science Day? Meet Chandrasekhar Venkat Raman, or as we call him, C.V. Raman. In India, education is a dream for many and a struggle for others. However, during British rule, a man from a small town called Tiruchirappalli in Tamil Nadu studied and conducted research in India itself. At some point, everyone has an inspiration. Initially, C.V. Raman, who studied at Madras Presidency College, was interested in sound and acoustics. The strange fact is, there is a law in Western science which states that certain overtones just cannot be produced by any musical instruments. But the veena violates it. You know why? All because of this curved bridge. Whereas Western instruments have flat bridges. How much our ancients knew about acoustics? But everything changed when he came across the research of British scientist Lord Rayleigh, which inspired him to shift his focus towards light and optics. He was fascinated by the science of light. See, most people believed the sea appeared blue because it reflected the color of the sky. If you thought the same, you weren't entirely wrong. Even scientist Rayleigh, who won Nobel Prize for explaining why the sky is blue, supported this idea in a paper published in 1910. But C.V. Raman was not satisfied with the explanation. Why does sea look blue even on cloudy days? And water in a clear glass looks colorless. That doubt was running in his mind. So he decided to test it scientifically. He took sunlight and passed it through a special filter, allowing only violet light to enter a liquid. If the Rayleigh theory was 100% correct, the light should have the same wavelength and color as the original light. The outgoing light should still be just violet. But when Raman examined the light that came out... The spectrum, of course. The spectral lines will indicate any change in frequency. Asha Babu, arrange for the spectroscope quickly. Quickly! Something shocking happened. He found green color light was also coming out of it. This is due to something called inelastic scattering. Consider light as tiny particles called photons. When these photons hit a molecule, the molecule absorbs the energy and re-emits the photons in different directions. This is called scattering of light. The photons can gain or lose energy. And when it does, the light changes color. Imagine dropping a perfectly efficient ball on the floor. It comes back to the same height, right? That's elastic scattering. The energy before and after remains the same. This is what Rayleigh told. But if I drop it on a drum, the ball loses some energy and doesn't bounce as high. Now suppose we bounce the ball on a drum that is already vibrating. In that case, no matter what height we drop the ball from, it will bounce to a height greater than its initial drop height. This is because the energy from the vibrating drum is transferred to the ball resulting in the ball having more energy after the bounce than it initially had. This is inelastic scattering. The molecule sometimes steals and loses some energy from the light, shifting its color. This is the inelastic scattering. The molecule sometimes steals or loses some energy by shifting its color. And that is the Raman effect. In 1921, he published a paper titled on the molecular scattering of light in water and the color of the sea, in which he stated that the deep blue color of the ocean was not just due to reflection, but also due to the scattering of blue light. When sunlight enters the water, the molecules absorb colors at the red end of the spectrum, like red, orange, yellow, much more efficiently than those at the blue end. This selective absorption means that less red light is reflected or transmitted through the water. The remaining blue light, which isn't absorbed much, is scattered in all directions by the water molecules. This scattering causes the blue light to be more visible from different angles, giving the sea its characteristic blue appearance. Since Raman discovered this effect on February 28, India celebrates National Science Day on this date every year in his honor. Well, Raman's effect is used everywhere today. 
from detecting counterfeit drugs to solving crimes to searching for life on Mars, Raman spectroscopy is an indispensable tool in modern science. While this explanation might seem simple, C.V. Raman's journey wasn't anything easy. Throughout his 66-year research career, he published over 450 original research papers. He mentored students who collectively published over 1,000 research papers. Many people work hard, but not everyone takes risks and makes sacrifices. In 1906, he secured a high-paying government job in the finance department. Initially, he worked in government service during the day and did research at night. Eventually, he realized that research was his true passion. Science isn't about memorizing facts. It's about asking questions. Questions that might seem too simple. But sometimes, simple questions lead to extraordinary discoveries. So, question it. Who knows? Maybe you'll discover the next Raman effect. If you want to know about another scientist who made our country proud, do let us know in the comments and we will make a separate video about it. So, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, this is Rakesh signing off.